going to try to make this quick. I just wanted to do a quick little project um, using a design that I found on Apex Embroidery. And um, it's just a cute little kitchen design. I want to use HTV and I'm going to put it on a tea towel. Okay. So what I'm using is heat transfer vinyl from Silhouette. I purchased it at Joann's, but you can get it from anywhere. I'll post a couple links in my description. Um, there was some of where you can find them on Amazon. Okay, so I'm just gonna jump right in. If you haven't done HTV before, you have to make sure that it's face down on the glossy side, okay? You want it to be cutting the top. And you want, mine is a kind of a wonky piece because I'm not a very good hand cutter. <laughs> so I have to overlap it a little bit in case my design comes up to the top. So just be a little bit thoughtful about that. Okay. And to prevent it from slipping, this is so sticky right now. It's a brand new mat that I don't really have to use this very often. Make sure you get all your debris off of it. And I'm just using a Pampered Chef little squeegee thing. I use it for everything. Okay, you don't want to push too hard because it will scar the HTV. Okay, so just gently, if you have an older mat, you might want to be a little bit more thoughtful about the, the bumps and stuff like that. This is my second mat. That's the only reason I know these things. <laughs> All right, so from here, we're gonna go to our computer. And right now I have the design file open and I'm gonna drag it into my removable disc, okay? Now when you open, or when you turn on your scan and cut, if you have it connected to your computer, like I do, with this kind of a cord, um, it'll, bring up this separate folder as soon as you plug it in. So you can also just drag your design over into this folder and you can also double check and make sure that your design is on there. Okay, so it is. So let's go ahead and get started again. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks for bearing with me. Okay, so we're going to choose pattern, and this should be in our saved data and from the computer. And it'll say SVG Kitchen 3. We're going to choose that. Okay, well, for some reason, kitchen number three was too complicated for the scanning cut. I've never come across that before, but. Whatever, so I loaded kitchen number two. And I understand retrieving should take a couple seconds, but that last retrieving took like three minutes just for them to tell us that it's too big or too complicated, sorry. Okay, so yes, this is the one I want. And then I'm gonna click it, I'm gonna drag it to the middle, and then I'm gonna go up here, and then I'm gonna choose this box with two arrows, and we're gonna make it big. Okay, we have about eight and a half by eight and a half to work with. So let's just go with seven and a half and seven and a half to give enough border. Okay. Oh well, it's not a perfect square, but we'll make the top seven and a half. Oh wait, the width is what we have to worry about. So let's make the width the biggest, like the seven and a half. Sorry about the shaking table. I got this cute table when I bought a sewing machine off of Craigslist and it just kind of floats around. What can we use it for? And then I realized it's perfect for a mobile scan and cut desk. Sorry about that, just had to show you. Okay, so I'm gonna move this up here to the corner so it can be where my, my HTV already is. And with HTV, we have to also go in here and mirror it, okay? You have to turn it around because it's gonna cut it into this and then you're going to turn it over and put it on your fabric. Hope that makes sense. Okay, I'll show you. Okay, click OK. I'm going to add a test cut. Unless you've already been cutting the same stuff, I would do a test cut each and every time. 
and actually after you've been doing a lot of them I would do a test cut on the next maybe after 10 projects just to make sure that your blade hasn't moved at all and for some reason I can't find my little pick you know when you get organized and then you can't find anything that's me <laughs> okay so this is what I'm gonna use hard to get a well it's a clay tool but it has a hook and it has a thing on both sides and I think it says low but spelled L-O-E-W there we go Cornell made in China of course okay let's place that a little further down so it's easier to get to Choose cut. It's going to tell us how long it's going to take. Okay, it says four minutes. And so we're going to load our mat. Okay. My blade's already at a pretty low setting, so I'm going to do the test cut at the blade it's already at. So um, once we have it loaded, we just hit start. And it's going to cut that out, but then it's going to stop and let me pick it out. Oh, it didn't cut everything. So, it looks like I need to adjust my settings. Okay, I'm going to hit quick cutting. It's not going to change anything, okay? Okay. So, all I'm going to do is take my blade out right now. I have it right here and that's set with what I'm doing with contact paper. Um, I think my blade is a little bit off so I've just been compensating. So I'm going to actually turn it up. Okay so just a little bit closer to the one and see how that goes. Okay. Alright so let's get out of here. We have to go all the way back and we have to move this guy. We can move him down a little bit. Oh, hello. I always misplace my what you call it too. So I'm just gonna use something else. Okay, so let's hit cut. Let's hit start again. Okay. And down here is where oops, I have it cut out hard to see but it's right there and it should just pull up really simply I think I might have I was outside of the thing that's perfect okay so you want to make sure that it slides up really nice and easy but then you also want to make sure that it doesn't cut through on the bottom so it looks pretty perfect to me all right so instead of hitting quick cutting this time I'm going to hit start I have my pressure at zero and my speed at zero. Um, I've learned that it doesn't need a lot of pressure at all on projects like this. done it'll say finish cutting you choose okay and then that button there spits out the mat okay okay guys I had to take a minute and do the weeding and talk to my son and make my dog try to chill out but I got all that accomplished except the dog part anyways so the towels I'm gonna use today are from amazon.com from a store called eat supply and these they're tea towels they come folded really beautifully um, but in a way that didn't make sense for me for my placement because I'm kind of a middle of the towel kind of person or edge of the like corner of the towel kind of person um, but I I wanted this to be specifically middle of the towel okay so I have a friend who is in Dallas or not Dallas oh my gosh she's in Houston and um, 
they didn't lose their home, but they did lose almost all the, you know, like the, the floors and the walls and everything. So they're working on getting everything all fixed up, but she's going to need some kitchen supplies. So I didn't know how to help her. You know, I know money is the fastest thing, but it's not always the easiest thing because it's hard to get a hold of her right now. But I do know that I can make things for whenever her kitchen is back to normal. She can have a nice, nice things in her kitchen. So I'm going to do um, HTV with this one. And with your HTV that you cut out, I'm so sorry about my dog. Please go lay down, sissy. Um, you're going to, this is the sticky side. Remember how we cut it upside down? Once you have it all weeded out, you take that sticky and you put it on here. And you make your placement. And it's really nice because it's see-through. You can see exactly where you want it to be. And I think that this will be just beautiful. And I think I might add a little ruffle at the bottom if I'm feeling ambitious. After I'm going to do an um, embroidery set of these that have, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in red work from Embroidery Library. So I'm really excited about that. So anyways, so um, I just lay it right down here on top of the towel and then I just take another piece of cotton and this is just one of my dinner napkins. Um, I didn't make these. Some lady, some older lady in San Jose probably 50 years ago made these <laughs> and I just became the inheritor because I love stuff like that. Okay, so I put this over the top of it. People call it a pressing cloth, and some people have specific cloths for it. I have it at my highest heat. I have it at my linen setting. Okay. And you just want to go over it just once, just to kind of get everything nice and smooth. You don't have to be putting any pressure just yet. Okay. With smaller designs, you can um, take the, the plastic off really soon while it's still hot sometimes, but on these bigger designs, you want to let it wait, okay? All right, so once you've got, in, got everything all smoothed down, you're going to want to give it some pressure, okay? It doesn't have to be a lot. You don't have to be a strong, crazy person, but just, you know, more pressure than just one hand. And just let it set for, you know, five to seven seconds. And then just kind of scoot it down a little bit. Let it overlap a little if you want. And the point is to, to get it so heated that it gets off of the plastic and it melds with the cotton. Okay, that's the plan. Once we take the plastic off, it's still going to be just kind of sitting on top of the cotton. So we're going to go over it again without the plastic, but still with the pressing cloth, okay? You don't want to touch the plastic with your iron if you don't have to. Sissy, I'm sorry, honey, but you need to be quiet. Okay. All right. So that's how it looks right now. Let's get up close. Okay. So if we try to take it off now, some of it might come. It looks like it's all gonna come. Okay, well, let's just roll with it. And then again, I'm really sorry about my dog. <laughs> she loves my teenage son. And every time he comes out of his room, she gets so excited. And then it's hard to get her back down. But well, it looks like that worked to take the plastic off whenever it was still hot. So if you can do it without pulling anything off, you are golden. Okay, I don't know if it's going to show very well, but well, it looks like it melded really good actually with this kind of cotton. With other fabrics, I've had to go over it a few times and make sure that the plastic actually got into the material that I was using. I'm still going to go over it once or twice with the pressing cloth over it. Just to double set it, you don't want to give a gift and then have it uh, in my learning experience <laughs> through the years I've learned you know that it stinks whenever you give somebody a gift that you think that they're really gonna love and they do really love it and then it unravels or starts chipping or whatever the thing is you know so these towels are really really awesome because they're holding all the heat really good 
and it looks like the HTV melds to them really quickly beautifully okay so for Christina all right so this is gonna be a really big one um, my other ones I think I'm probably gonna do a corner placement with them because that's the old-fashioned way to do it and that's how they're gonna look the best because I have a 4 by 4 hoop in my embroidery so the smaller is gonna go in a corner I'm really sorry about the dog <laughs> all right I hope that this was helpful for you guys if you have any questions let me know Thank you.